welcome back to another episode. Today we're going to discuss how to use the resolution as a way to find islands. And uh, I'm going to go over a very simple way to do this. A little bit time consuming if you uh, consider the amount of time you have to wait for the, um, you know, the process to actually run through. But your reward is that you're going to catch way more islands using this than you would traditionally just um, using a standard island search. So when you have your material, your item almost just about where you want it, whether it's, you know, supported uh, fully or not. These aren't 100% supported yet, but they're close. I've got a framework done, and 90% of what I want to do is there. Major islands are already supported. But, of course, I'm, I, you know, we all miss some. So now I actually do my island searching once I'm done. And we'll get a better look at how many islands that we actually have. But first, let's talk about how this actual um, kind of trick works. It's not really a trick. So what you're going to want to do is, you know, just like usual, I mean, like I said, you support your item, go about setting up your supports, like, or however you, you plan to do that, whatever your plan of attack is. Um, and then once you have that laid out, do you know your normal you know your, your normal pr routine what do you want to, you know if you've already done an island search at this point fine um you can always go back and uh do this again now it's interesting because i discovered this by talking to a friend of mine while we were going over a support session i was kind of supporting some stuff with him showing him how i do things and he brought up a fact that you know another colleague uh had brought up the point of changing resolutions when someone hands off a file to you. And this is something that has actually occurred to me a few times. And so in the when you go to change your resolution, the way you do that is you change your, your resin settings. So you're going to go to your printer and then you're going to go to your res resin settings. And I already have one set up for 35 microns or 35 UM. And I have a profile set up for 50 microns or 50 UM or 0 0.05 millimeter, however you want to refer to it. Um, that being the case, what you want to do is you want to, if you're working at, at, a, at 50 first, and that's where you originally did your island searching, you want to swap down to 35. Now, in this particular instance, I'm going to do my island searching. I haven't done it yet. It doesn't matter what kind of printer you're using. Um, islands, you know, the resolution is going to scale based on how you set up your resin. So, even if you, if you want to do this as a really quick thing for a printer that you just got, maybe you haven't set up your resin settings appropriately yet, you can just go in and tweak the resolution to do this. And then you do your island detection as you would. And of course, with the magic of editing, we won't make you wait through all that. We found 41 islands at 50 microns. And some of these are just awkward to place because of the parts. They're inside of stuff. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's difficult to place them sometimes by hand. So I will let the, um, the little tool there add them for me on occasion if I have a hard time getting, uh, getting myself into those little pockets and areas. Now, all the parts here have been hollowed prior to me bringing them in to lychee so there's no um, additional need to worry about that now go ahead and just place island supports the way you normally would until you've um, got you know you've tagged you hit all the islands that the uh, system is telling you is there and once you've done that we're going to move on to the next part of this process. Now, if you've already created that resin profile that we talked about at the higher resolution, whatever the highest resolution of your printer is, if it's 35, 25, 10, go as high as it can go. The reason for this is because the smaller the slice, the more chance it's going to catch a smaller island. And 
even if it may not have been an issue at the higher resolution you intend to print at, you're going to add a little extra support on some points that are probably some points of uh, issue anyway. So in doing this, I think you're really giving yourself an added up in your the ability to uh, get a, a kind of an easier look at where most of your islands are and being able to support them without really spending like a day or two going over each particular part. Um, I found this is a great way to speed up workflow. Now don't get me wrong, I will still go and do my layer slider and I will still go up and down and I will still definitely check for additional islands one layer at a time. And I will definitely still work on that. In a manual sense, of course, is what I mean. Uh, so I don't use this as a full replacement, but what I do use it as is it's definitely a confidence thing that you you have a little extra confidence in knowing that you've done a lot of verbose scans um, using the system itself, which is already very good. And um, it will help a lot. I've actually found that there were a few times that I've actually tested it and not gone and done my layer by layer and used the slider and uh, it, it had no issues whatsoever. Later, it actually caught every single island. There were no problems. Um, and so that was good. That was great. Uh, it's not always going to be perfect. So, I mean, I'm not recommending this as a way to skip using tools like UV tools or skip you just kind of going through your um, part, you know, layer by layer, which is honestly the, the way I recommend doing it. You just really need to get used to that. It's, it takes a bit of time. It's not so bad when you actually think about it because you're going through a couple thousand layers at most. It's going to take you maybe like a minute or maybe a second or two per layer to kind of give your eye a second to go, okay, nothing here, nothing here, keep moving up. And you'll get used to doing it, you'll get faster at it. It's honestly the best way to do it. Now, UV tools gives you a really good, uh, really good way to look at it. Uh, I have used that in the past. I don't actually use it very much now. I just go layer by layer and I check the, the slices myself. I find this to be accurate enough and I can rely on myself to do it and my prints turn out pretty good. So we can just, you know, add the additional supports we want to. And we're still at 50 UM, mind you. So we've done our one island search. We've fulfilled all the island searching there. And when you're done done, like pretty much done done, almost with supporting here, um, might be a couple yellow zones. I want to kind of maybe pepper in some additional pieces. But for the most part, it actually looks pretty good. These parts are hollow, so they don't have a lot of extra weight. Um, so yeah, they should be fine. Okay. And as you obviously finish up all your supporting, when you do this, make sure you do anything else you want to do first. If you want to do bracings, if you want to do stuff like that before you switch resolutions and then do the additional island search. Not only does it take a minute, um, but it might benefit you to just run the bracings before. Um, that way you have everything kind of set up the way you want it to. Then you bring it down to the lower resolution or the higher resolution. Run the island search again. And then see what you come up with. So here what I do is I switch to my resin setting. I'm staying on the same printer. Nothing else changed. Just, just switching to the other profile that has the 35 microns. So it's changed down there in the corner. And then I'll just go back over to my island tab, which is going to say I have no islands, but that's a lie. Because it doesn't actually know. And then I'm going to search. And of course, we're going to edit out that loading because that takes forever. And nobody wants to sit through that. And then when we come back, we have now found that there are additional islands that we have found. So we've got 23 additional islands. And we can go through again and place them more design. So right here, this is a prime example of how you can see when a file gets pre-supported, for example, 
and the individual working on the file that's pre-supporting it is working at 50 microns, because the majority of people will run at 50 microns. Um, when you want to run at a higher resolution, like 40, 35, 30, 25, etc., um, you obviously are going to have thinner slices. And I think the issue is people don't realize this. When you have thinner slices, you have slightly less material, which means you have the potential for really small islands to form where there weren't any before. So it is important, especially when you make a jump anywhere from you know one resolution to the other, you need to recheck your islands. And that is how I discovered this, was because I had to do this with a bunch of files that I was supporting and pre-supporting. I had to switch back and forth between 50, 40, 35, and continuously recheck all the items. And as, as time-consuming as that was, the end result was eventually we did get everything. And it, it took a while to, to work that out, but this trick, this, this going back and forth between the resolution scales, was a great way to do it. And it was a way to do it with what I felt was a fairly level, fairly good level of accuracy. And then at that point, you can switch back to the resolution you want to print at and um, finish off any additional supporting you want to do. And then go ahead and give your, uh, your part a slice. Now, in this particular application, I'm not going to go through the whole slicing process because I'm not 100% done um, supporting these parts. I actually have to look at some many support areas I want to reinforce here in the bottom of the foot as well. Uh, by the way, this is a fully customized piece. This is the Super Neo Metal Sonic. Uh, we're doing this for a customer who's requested it. It's called Custom Sculpt, Custom Print, Custom Build, and a Custom Paint Job. Uh, so if anyone's interested in custom stuff, I think I just said custom like six times in the past four seconds. <laughs> but go ahead and shoot us an email and we'll hook you up. Now, obviously, we're busy with uh, a lot of projects at the same time, but I will try to get back to you as soon as I possibly can because we love to help everybody with what they want to build. Now, um, again, you can go back and forth a bunch of times. You can go back and forth to a bunch of different resolutions. So, like I said, you can go you know, 40, 50, 35. That's a way to do it. And you can change between each one. You can do another island search at each resolution, and you will see that it will catch a different set of islands on each resolution. And then you can switch back to whatever printing resolution you want to use, and at that point, you'll be good to go, pretty much. I mean, still do your layer checks and make sure, you know, or use your UV tools, whatever it is that you do, um, to do your final checks on the parts. Uh, that's my advice on that. But that is it for this trick. Now, like I said, not too complicated, um, just time consuming, because you really just have to wait for that island search to go. And if you use real like I do, it takes a bit. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, guys. As always, I appreciate it. Please hit that subscribe, like, and don't forget to comment. We like to hear what you think. See you all soon.